Hello and welcome back to World of Warcraft and another gold challenge mode dungeon run. My name's Lumen and right now we're having a look at Blood Maul Slag Mines. This is the second to last run that I'm going to be doing after this is just UBRS and then we finished. This one, because it was all the way at the end, felt a lot easier than the others and we also had two party members here, Mika and Luthira, that had actually done this one on gold before. So we were just doing it for the three of us that hadn't done it and because of that they had a lot of insight. You know, they kind of knew what to do and that helped out a lot. Now, these first couple of pulls, they need to be greedy pulls because you need to make up some time on the easier mobs. The enforcers here, they do an AoE smash. As a tank or melee DPS or range that's too close to the mobs, you gotta watch out because that does either a lot of damage or just kills you straight up. The overseer, which is the only caster here, he casts subjugate on random party members at random times. It seems pretty random to me at least, and that basically mind controls them. You can interrupt him or stun him or whatever to get rid of that. And much like all the other packs in all the other dungeons, uh, AoE stuns work wonders. It allows you to pull so much more. Now, we gotta pick and choose a little bit and, and kind of pull extra mobs here to make up for the invisibility run that we're gonna do later. And we chose to kill more slavers and kill less of the more dangerous ones, the ones that actually have abilities and stuff that they can use. So again, you can see the crushers going off there. The slavers themselves, they just get uh, more dangerous as time goes by. They keep casting the slavers rage and they keep attacking faster and doing more damage and stuff. But they are, even with that, still easier than most of the other mobs in this instance. So I think you generally want to just kill as many of them as you can if you can, to make up those 39 enemies you need for the enemy count. The enforcers also do a chargey leap type thing, and they put a debuff on you. You can see I've got two stacks of it now, and it's going to last for 10 seconds. That's dangerous if it stacks too high, and it's probably not the greatest thing if you do like I did here and run into the next pull without letting the debuff drop off, or at least without maybe stunning the enforcer so he doesn't reapply it to you and refresh those stacks was a bit of a mistake on my part. Now in this pool, there's a Geomancer along with the Overseer and the Enforcer. And the Geomancer, he costs Stone Bolts, which do a decent amount of damage. And he also puts shields on all his allies. The shields, they don't absorb too much damage. Like, they're not too much of a problem. You can just DPS through them. But if you can interrupt, and you should be able to, okay? You have five people in your party. You should be able to interrupt most of the stuff. If you can, you probably should. I mean, that's something I can say for <laughs> every single pool ever. You should interrupt if you can. If you've got an interrupt available, you should interrupt it unless you're saving it for something else. So once this enforcer is down, you should just be careful for the patrol that comes from the left, and then move on to the next pull. This is a tough one. These mages, they need to be interrupted or stunned constantly because those lava bursts that they cast do a serious amount of damage. I died the first time we came through here because I just didn't expect that much damage coming through. We didn't we didn't interrupt them, we didn't stun them, we didn't prep for it basically. And then the Blood Mole Warder here, he casts a Frightening Roar, which fears everyone. We actually had the Ground in Totem down and ready for it when he cast it, so the fear lasted for like a split second, it wasn't a problem. Finally, the Ogre Mages here, they also have like an Enrage type thing, which makes them cast a lot faster. I think that Druids and Hunters, and maybe even Shamans, they can use Tranquilize in Shot or whatever to dispel it. Now these are the final two mobs before the boss. They come running once you kill that previous pack. You've got to be ready for them, and you really need to be quick with your interrupts on these as well. We actually missed them a couple of times here, and you'll see our entire party gets feared. It's pretty scary. If it happens at a bad time while people are low or whatever, and it does that, that burst damage to your group, that AoE damage to your group, and it fears them, then, well, you can drop too low and you can be in sort of an unrecoverable, unsalvageable uh, position after that. So, interrupt, stun, make sure they don't get those casts off, and if you can, move on to the boss as quick as possible as well, because you want to save time. It's a gold run after all. You want to make that gold timer. First boss, Slave Watcher Crush Toe. This is where we use our first heroism and the boss itself. He has Earth Crush, that's the ability you just saw. It sort of shoots a big rock type thing in a general direction that he aims at. He's doing it again there. Uh, he sort of just targets a random party member with that. It's not a big deal, it's very easy to, to dodge. Then he does Wild Slam which knocks people back and after that he immediately leaps and then he casts his Ferocious Yell. That's the order that it always happens in. Right after he leaps, he always casts the yell, and the yell is not good. If one of those goes through, bad things will happen. So you want to interrupt that yell uh, every single time, 
And that's the kind of thing that you want a rotation for. You want to say, okay, I'll take the first one, uh, Luthira takes the second one, moving third, Mikai fourth, and so on and so forth. The miners that he summons constantly throughout the fight, they can pretty much be ignored. They don't seem to have proper aggro tables. I don't know. I mean, I always say that for a lot of the stuff here without being certain, but it seems like they semi-fixate on people. They do not count towards the mob count that you need, so you don't want to kill them if you don't have to. And when you kill the boss, as you can see, they will just despawn. But the boss, again, much like the others that we use heroism on, is just a DPS race. If you kill him quick enough, then bad things don't really end up happening. Like, you can avoid a lot of the bad things that would otherwise happen. Now moving on, however, here's another pack with an Overseer, a Slaver, and a Geomancer. And then there's also two Enforcers at the back there. We were not entirely sure that we wanted to pull the Enforcers, but it happened anyway, so this was probably the most threatening pull of the entire dungeon. Just, I suppose, because there are so many different abilities you have to contest with here. There's actually a cast that nearly goes off called Suppression Field there that I didn't talk about before, and that's just a little area on the ground that he puts down that silences you, so you kind of want to stay out of it. But, again, with this group, it's all just about interrupting the right stuff and stunning the mobs at the right times, and then while doing all of that, avoiding the crushes. If you have less melee DPS, all of this is so, so, so much easier. If you have a, a druid or a death knight that can suck them all in and then stun them all in place, that's great too. I realize in hindsight, I probably should have moved a little quicker here, and I should have pulled the slavers before we were done with that pack, because we, we had the ability to do that. We could have done that. And this right here, this is where I actually just want to stop recording, because this is where things start going so horribly wrong, but somehow, somehow we still managed to make it. Authentic experience. You'll see in just a minute. I don't know if it was 100% my fault, but I suspect what's about to go down was mostly my fault, and I, I think I could have handled it a little better. Now, on this run, I think we had the least tries of all the runs that we did. We basically ran through it once, and then we just came again and we finished it on gold and it was super scrappy. Again, just because we didn't get that much practice on it. Now, this little elemental gauntlet here is very difficult for multiple reasons. It's kind of tough to pull all the elementals as a tank to get aggro on all of them. I run in, I cast first Consecration on the ground there, then I throw out a Holy Wrath, then I start using Hammer of the Righteous to try and get aggro on stuff. I put on another Consecrate, but at this point already, there are so many mobs, and then you still need to go for the Magma Lord, because you've got to keep moving here, else more elementals spawn constantly. And when I got to the Magma Lord here, there was just so much on me already, and the cast from the Magma Lord, which is the big fireball, it wasn't interrupted in time. I could have interrupted that, if I'm not mistaken, so... I suppose that was my bad. I mean, one of the DPS could have done it as well, but that didn't go according to plan. Then I ran back, and while I was doing this, somehow... All the DPS didn't just immediately die. Maybe it was Zohi doing amazing healing. Maybe they were crowd controlling nicely. I don't know. But the two hunters managed to stay alive. And they, all the while I'm running back here, were doing damage, doing damage, doing damage. Constantly chipping away at it while somehow surviving. I don't know if they feigned death and waited for it to run to us. Because you can see I was in combat again here. I somehow had aggro on everything. But they killed the Magma Lord back there. They killed the Magma Lord, which absolutely saved us here, and I would say saved our gold run, because if you don't kill the Magma Lord, then the stuff all just respawns, the Magma Lord will reset, and at the same time, obviously, that whole gauntlet will just be there again for you to deal with, and you'll lose so much time that the gold run will not be salvageable. At this point, I already just had so much attack in me, and I didn't have any cooldowns left. I was just a couple of seconds off having Guardian of Ancient Kings there. Again, things did not go according to plan, but right now, I think... Like, right now, that Magma Lord died. There you go, moving said Magma Lord is dead. I don't know how they did it. I have absolutely no idea, but they did kill it. And along with that dying, the rest of the mobs also just fizzled out a little bit. And, well, we did it. We somehow did it. We moved on to the next boss, and that was that. It's just this one uh, vengeful Magma Elemental left. I decided I was just going to engage him and take him down. It was a bit of a risk. But I saw that Zohi was close behind and, well, all was well in the world once more. So you're going to run through here now and you're going to see it's all clear. I don't know how it happened. I don't know. Super scrappy, but still, gold is gold. You can see Mikai's over there, Moving's over here. They survived. They saved this run. Now in this next part here, you want to 
hug this big bonfire in the middle so that you don't accidentally pull the Syrian embers and the vengeful elemental which is the bigger of the elementals we accidentally pulled two of the embers there fortunately they weren't linked up with the rest of the group because that would have been really really bad but what happens here is every couple of seconds a bunch of elementals pop out of the two furnaces on the sides there and they run in here to fight the ogres and you gotta sort of try and time it right we didn't time it perfectly there, but if you do time it right, you can let them fight each other and then engage here just before the next packs come in. So I think the best time to run in is just as the elementals run in, you run in behind them and then you can kill these dudes before more of them spawn. But if you take too long, then too many of the elementals spawn and you get overrun. So it's again one of those race type situations where you got to do it as quick as possible. Now the next boss. The Forge Master, or maybe if you'd like to call him Forge Master Gog De, that's fine too. It's a funny name. Uh, he's not actually the real boss here. When you engage him, he starts casting a couple of random abilities that do basically nothing. He summons Runation and Calamity, which are two elementals. Most of the stuff he casts can just be dodged. You can see Magma Barrage there. He's just spamming it like crazy all over the room. Easy to dodge. Very, very easy to dodge. Now Calamity comes up. It's a fire elemental. You just want to focus those down as quick as possible. The two elementals, you take them down. And then the big boss, or the real boss, comes out of the forge behind him. And then you start that battle. Now, we could have actually used heroism here. I, I looked at the time. I see we've got 10 minutes 44 left. So if we had used it here, we'd actually be able to use it on the last boss again. But this fight wasn't challenging enough for us to need to use it for it to warrant a heroism. So we didn't risk it. We rather just saved it instead. Uh, but there you go, that's the big guy, that's the real guy. His name is Magmalatus. He does a bunch of different stuff. For melee, you've got to run out of the slag smash. Then he also summons elementals around the room that do all sorts of crazy AoE stuff that you need to dodge, you need to look out for. That's called Molten Impact. There you can see behind you there's a Molten Elemental. And uh, that will just cast these funny spikes that, that shoot in all directions that you can, again, just run out of. And it also does... The same magma barrage that the previous dude that we just killed does. There you can see the elemental cast in Volcanic Tantrum now. And I think that we chose not to kill the elementals here because we sort of had faith in our ability to dodge everything that needed to be dodged. We focused our DPS on the boss and it worked out. It worked out reasonably well. You can, if you'd like to, stun and interrupt them. That does work, but only periodically, of course. You stun them, they're going to stop casting for a little bit, then they'll just resume casting. I think you are best off just focusing on the boss, killing him as quick as possible, and then moving on. So once you take him down, it's just a couple more mobs, and then you do your invisibility run. And the invisibility run we chose to do was very short, but it skips some really, really annoying stuff that you would otherwise have to kill. You'll see in just a moment what we decide to do here. And you'll also see that our hunters are really, really bad at using Aspect of the Pack. I think if we had Aspect of the Pack in all our runs that we did, we probably would have shaved a couple of seconds off at the end every single time. Just there, for instance, if we had Aspect of the Pack on to run to these groups here and then off as we reached them, that would have been great. Would have been absolutely amazing. So when you pull these, you must not go too close to that little pit of lava over there because there's that, there's that worm in there scary lava worm that doesn't really do very much of anything except keep you in combat for a long time and well he takes long to die too that's that's it that's what he does he's there to annoy you and to waste your time so he is part of the invisibility run he's he's part of the reason we do the run here so that we can skip him and it makes me all sorts of happy because i hate killing that guy now don't go too close we made the mistake a couple of times of going too close and then he just pops up, he's like, What's up guys? I'm here to keep you in combat for all eternity and ruin your chances of gold. So you use your potion, you just run past here. Again, no aspect of the pack. Oh my god, hunters. <laughs> uh, I mean, we were telling them this when we were doing this, but it didn't really matter. We made it as far as we needed to make it. We skip in the magma worm plus that big pack behind us and now we start in the bane of my existence. This guy, his name is Roltal, he's annoying. He casts fiery boulders and that's pretty much the extent of his dangerous mechanics. They come down, they drop, they roll back, and then they roll back from rolling back. So you gotta remember where they are. You gotta visualize where they were because it doesn't show where they're coming back to. And you're gonna run up and down, you can see there's the first one. 
that left, there comes the second one, and then the third one is going to come exactly where we stand in right now. This is his other ability, it's called Heat Wave, it just pushes you back and makes everything much more difficult. Again, just to dodge the boulders and stuff like that. And finally, he does Burn In Slag, which just puts fire on the ground and, again, makes your life kind of difficult. Even ranged DPS have a tough time here. Usually it's just melee that have a tough time, but on this fight, even ranged DPS do. Now, unfortunately, Mikai died to one of the boulders and he's actually the dude that has our combat res. So it's obviously a little unfortunate that we can't res him up. So the fight's taking a bit longer than it should because we won DPS down. And somehow I managed to survive another round of boulders here. It all gets increasingly difficult because obviously when he casts Heat Wave, which he's doing right now, you can see it pushes you back and then it might push you back into the fire. And then the boulders are still busy going on. So all of it adds up and makes it very chaotic and very difficult to do. One of the more stressful fights for me, I'd say. Now here comes the final devastating round of boulders. At this point, my concentration was at its end and I could in no way remember where everything was going. So there comes the first one. Now you're supposed to remember, okay, that the, the first one that comes back is gonna come back there. And I completely forgot. I just didn't keep track of where they were going or where they were coming back to at least. And then I ended up standing in this corner like a fool because I just didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> but again, somehow we managed to scrape through here, and this is the very last scrappy part. I promise, I promise, but look at that, it's just Luthira and Zohi, and they somehow staying alive, tanking the boss, and killing the boss. What the hell? How? How even does an Enhancement Shaman do that? Look at his health as well. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. So they saved us. So basically everyone... Everyone in our group had an opportunity to save us in this run, I suppose, except me. Like that, I think the run was a great success, right? Great success. So, you can see our enemy count is on 35 out of 39 enemies. The final four that we need are all in the final chamber where the final boss is, and we're going to skip everything else up until there. We don't need an invisibility potion or anything like that to do it. We have one of our hunters do some fancy... Uh, kiting and feign death in stuff but with this guy the big ogrom that's walking up and down here you want to avoid him so you run around to the side here you can see you just camp out in this little corner then you wait for him to come back and then you run past him but then after that the next two they are the tougher ones to get by you need a sacrificial lamb you need either a hunter with feign death or someone that's okay to die and then just be raised again that's what you need on the final two to dodge them we're gonna do it now with i think mikai I can't remember if it was at the end of the day Mikai or Moving that did it, but one of our hunters pulls them by, he runs past with deterrence on so he doesn't get killed, and then we sneak by. And again, you gotta wait, you gotta time this sneak in by perfectly. There he pops deterrence, he runs past, you must not get too close to them else you also get put in combat. We put a marker on the ground here, Mikai died unfortunately instead of feigning death. It ended up being fine, we could res him. I don't know what Lithira was doing, he was playing with his life or our entire party's life by running up to the Ogron there. Moving, lying in feign death because he has no trust and, well, look, it was it was a, a good idea because I pulled this accidentally, I didn't even realize there was a mob here, but this is one of the last four that we need to kill. So this, again, slowed us down a little bit because you kind of want to pull all four of those together. And I think more importantly, when you do pull them, you do want all your DPS alive to kill them. So we take the one down, there are still three left. Lithira had Mikai, he, he rezzed him at max range there, and that's pretty much it. So once Mikai is up, we still had 3 minutes 40 seconds, which is a little close, but considering we had heroism, we were sort of okay with it. And the final boss is again not too tough. Now these flame speakers, they have this channel flames ability that you may have seen when we killed the, the single lone one that was over here. And you want to gather them up immediately so that you have the channel flames let's just say, happen in a more manageable way. Now, these channel flames, you can do two things with them. You can either stun the mobs, you can't interrupt them. You can either stun them, or you can reflect them back. So, we decided to go the stun in route. It's double capacitor at the end here, and then I stunned the one. I uh, tried to interrupt the other stuff that they were casting, but again, you can't interrupt channel flames, which is the big, dangerous one. The main thing is that you just shouldn't stand in it. You can move out of it pretty easily. You can see that there's more than enough time to move out. It won't instantly kill you or whatever. But the alternate way of doing it is just you pop down a grounding totem or something like that. And it reflects all the damage back to them. Now the final boss. Gugrok. These names, man. These names. We pulled him immediately. 
I had all the cooldowns available to me. We used heroism. Uh, we were pretty confident at this point. He has one ability that you absolutely have to interrupt because it'll pretty much one-shot you. It's called Molten Blast. And uh, the rest of his abilities you can't interrupt at all. They all uh, locked down. So whenever he casts Molten Blast, you want to just interrupt that. You let the rest of it go off. He makes these fire patches on the ground that you just got to kite him out of constantly. He also summons these elementals that run to forges. I don't even know what they do when they get to the forges because it's never happened to me. Ever. So once again, I kind of apologize for not knowing what that does. But we basically just cleaved them down as they spawned. They didn't even get very far. You can see as it crosses over the boss, the unstable slag there, it just sort of loses all its hit points. I think that having two hunters probably makes that a little bit easier. Luthira gave it a couple of smacks there, and it also just went down. But they are not too much of a problem, and your main focus should probably be on the boss. I mean, you need to kill them before they get to the forges, of course. But like I said, that seems to happen naturally. They just die. Again, two hunters. Makes life easy. But there you go. Boss is dead. Not too tough. There's that big lag spike because everyone's getting the achievements at the end. And that's gold on Blood Maul Slag Mines. I did say as we were starting this that two of our members already had that gold. They had completed it. So this one was much easier because we had that insight. We had that experience in our group. And they knew all the little tricks. But yeah, after watching that, I'm sure you can see that most of these gold runs are pretty manageable even if you suck. Like even if you make tons of mistakes, you can still get the gold. I was, if I remember correctly, being very pessimistic about this, like a real negative Nancy saying, oh guys, guys, we've wiped so many times, there's no way we're gonna do it, we should just reset. And they were like, no, no, let's keep going, let's keep going. It's okay, it's okay, uh, we're gonna make the time up, it's not too tough. And well, we made the time up and it wasn't too tough. But I'm done. Check back here soon for more. Let me know what you think of that. Who, who made the most mistakes and who was the MVP there? I personally thought everyone except me did a great job. I get a little self-conscious showing videos like this wherein we die or we wipe or whatever because I always think it's mostly my fault because I'm the tank. I'm setting the pace. I'm the one that everyone has to follow through the dungeon and oh man, I don't know. Gold is gold. <laughs> I'll say it again. Check back here soon for more. Give it a like, share it and do all that good stuff. Most importantly though, happy gold and blood mold slag mines. Happy Warlords of Draenor Challenge Modes. Happy that. <laughs>